Hi, it's Tom Myers of Anatomy Trains, and it's summertime in Maine, which means we've been getting out to get things trimmed back and uh, ready for the summer, and I'm so glad to get outside. Uh, between the winter and COVID, we have been really pale and not very exercised, but now we're out, so it's great. However, I'm still spending a lot of time hovering with my hands over the computer, so here are some things for your hands and wrists and arms for self-help especially for those of you start by rubbing start by taking all the metal off your hands and wrists uh, rings and things like that so that you can then rub your hands together and get a nice bit of energy going between them you've done that before i don't know what that energy is maybe it's heat maybe it's something else but uh, it's just good to get your hands in gear before you go now one thing you can do how can i do this there we go is to come down. I'm going to hit some points that we didn't hit before in our other hand video on our way to the wrist and the forearm. So going down and getting that webbing, you understand that the hands are like the feet, a microcosm for the whole body. So I'm hitting points here that will get to your sinuses or your sphenoid bone or something. I don't know. It's really good to push that webbing back as you open your fingers into abduction as much as you can. And of course, we all know what a potent place this webbing is. And you've got a lot of webbing here, so you can go all the way down to the bottom of the bones, where the bones meet in that V. And anything in this V is a great place for point work. I'm pinching it between my thumb and forefinger there to open it up. And just keep moving your thumb as you do that. The other thing is to go up the sides of the fingers. You can do this kind of squeezing the toothpaste out of the tube or point by point by point by point. But we, the front and the back, get in contact with the world a lot. The sides do not. So go up the sides of the fingers. And if you run into a joint that's painful, then do some more work there. The channels in between the bones the metacarpals of the hand. Uh, obviously, you can do this with the rest of the fingers. I'm just not going to waste your time with it. And then I hold my wrist, and then I take my wrist around. If I want to load it more, I'm going to put a weight in here. One pound, five pound, it makes a difference uh, to what happens in your wrist. So you want to take your wrist into abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, and you put all those together, and you get a circle. Not yet pronation and supination doesn't matter so much about turning them. You're just turning those bones in your hand anyway. However, the carpal bones, and this is the carpal tunnel. I have not found that self-help mashing on the carpal tunnel does it. If you want to mash it, I take two balls. These are a little bit large. But if you put one ball on the thumb side of the heel of your hand and another ball on the little finger side of the heel of your hand, and then press down, you're not pressing into the carpal tunnel, but smushing on the carpal tunnel, putting a ball into the carpal tunnel is likely just to increase the inflammation there, not decrease it. Okay, if we get down to the forearm, let's start up here at this end, not the point of the elbow, but the two epicondyles here, top and bottom. Find them and go down down a little bit towards your hand, towards the back of your wrist, and work across the fascia that's coming up. It's fascia and muscle, but it's largely fascial here where it just comes right off the bone. This is often sore, might be secretly sore, or it might be just sore, and you can work down from there and you'll find sore points working down from there. Open them up and see if you can get hydration into this extensor group. When you're doing a lot of computer work, the extensor group, not the flexor group, takes the brunt. So work that extensor group. Again, I'm only doing it for a few seconds here for the magic of video, and you can do it for as long as you like. A similar thing applies from this sticky outy bit on the lower part of the arm. That leads into the common flexor tendon, and yeah, you can dig right into the muscle here. On the other side, it really, you want to be right close to the bone. On the flexor side, get down into the muscles and open them up, hydrate them. And 
you will be able to feel it better if you are flexing and extending your fingers while you're doing that, getting into the muscles of the back of the arm and the front of the arm. Now to clear the bones on the side, I find it really useful to just take two knuckles. I put my thumb on the two knuckles, but I have two knuckles slightly apart from each other and I hook them on the bone. I don't care if you go from wrist to elbow or elbow to wrist, it's easier to do on the little finger side because you can track that bone all the way up the arm to the elbow. So one knuckle is on either side of the bone. This is easier to do with your clients than it is with yourself and easier to do on a table than me holding my arm up in the air like this. So you get the idea. Now, if you turn around, do that to the thumb side of your hand, that's also useful, but you'll find that the radius will disappear into the flesh of your forearm. So you have to keep those fingers really tracking the bone. How far down your forearm can you track towards your elbow? You're gonna lose it in there somewhere, but just keep tracking down the edge of that bone and the edge of that bone. Generally peeling away from the wrist, but in opening that tissue, you can go either direction, okay? This, um, I, I do like the thing of putting a weight in your hands and doing the full thing so you keep your wrists nice and strong because they're in this kind of limpid position over the computer. Uh, these computers are going to be the death of us yet, but I do so like them. All right. Hope that was interesting. Take care. Keep going.